Hey Low Owners, it's Lowdy6 here with another video. And I have to kind of address this topic by saying communism. Now this word is something that instills fear in kind of the older generation, if you ask my grandparents or something, you know, the red scare and all that kind of stuff. But also is used today as kind of like a low-level insult. You commie, what are you, a communist? But the weird thing is, is that despite communist influence all over the entire world, especially when the Soviet Union was around, there's only five communist countries left. Those are China, Laos, Vietnam, North Korea, and Cuba. Having spent 10 years in China, I can tell you that the communism in China is more like the Diet Coke of Marxist theory. Chinese people don't really believe that China will be a communist you know, country someday with collective farms and all this kind of utopian ideals, but it's still taught and used as a political tool to kind of uh, justify one-party control. Here in Vietnam, the flavor is a little bit different. So today I'm going to talk about the differences between the communism that you see in Vietnam versus the communism that you see in China. Two countries on the surface seem like the most natural of allies. Similar ideological and traditional roots and values, both at times enemies of the West. But take one step into either country and you'll notice a huge aesthetic difference. China is dominated by tall, gray buildings, and in the countryside, you're going to find even more swaths of gray. Gray and bland colors are used in everything from skyscrapers to government buildings to small towns and even more rural areas. However, take a quick stroll through a Vietnamese city, although visibly poorer than China, you'll notice vibrant colors, French architecture, and a much better use of upkeep and maintenance. The symbols of communism share a common root in their Soviet influence, like Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum and China's Tiananmen Square, built to make the average citizen feel minuscule and insignificant. The cold, soulless feeling of these places is very palpable, even today. But remove any symbolism and look at the actual political systems employed by both Vietnam and China, and you can start to see some really big differences. China used communism in a time of civil war, in the war with Japan to consolidate power and propel Mao Zedong, or Chairman Mao, into a personality cult-driven figurehead that the world had rarely seen before. The hammers and sickles and down with the Western bourgeoisie and collectivist ideology may have rocked Chinese culture to its very core, with programs like the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, but this strongman approach to leading the country was nothing new. In fact, despite its new shiny Soviet-style label, China had just inadvertently created another dynasty, the same way it had been ruled for thousands of years. You see, China has seen itself as the center of the universe for millennia, expecting other territories and nations to respect it, all while maintaining an iron grip on its own people. This heavy-handed approach has affected Chinese culture deeply, and respect for leadership with little expected from those not in power has created a social structure of what we see in China today. <laughs> Vietnam, on the other hand, used communism in a very different way. In their case, communism was used as a tool to unify the nation to fight French occupation, followed by the Americans, and then weirdly enough, the Chinese who have traditionally viewed Vietnam as ancient Chinese territory. You can even see this in the Chinese name for Vietnam, Yunnan, which literally means South Canton, a southern region of China. Distrust of China, the West, and even the Soviet Union at times meant that Vietnam was ripe for a revolution, which ended up giving them very little support in the way of allies. However, its fierce land reform policies and redistribution of wealth programs meant major crackdowns and a very loyal peasant population that was eager to join the cause. The leader of communist Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, also differed greatly in his post-war approach, saying that the American people should not be blamed for the war, and as soon as it's over, we'll invite them for tea. This victim mentality was nearly absent in Vietnamese education and propaganda, with a heavy focus on pro-domestic nationalism and past forgiveness. Fast forward and the CCP still runs China, and its anti-Japan rhetoric is still taught and ingrained into the populace. Kids are taken to war museums as young as five years old to see photos of these mentally scarring atrocities that Japan committed against the Chinese people. Also, the media will listen and bow down to the government to label their hated country of the week, 
and use a victim mentality of everyone is out to get us, they don't understand our Chinese people, to create paranoia and national unity. You can see this in very trivial cases like in the Sweden hotel scandal where Chinese nationals were not allowed to sleep a day ahead of time in a Stockholm hotel lobby and were forced out by police. China turned it into a national tragedy. If you forget to include Taiwan as a part of China on a t-shirt, well you hurt the feelings of all the Chinese people. In a country that swiftly cracks down on any type of public gathering or protest, it's totally fine to start street riots when Japan is the target of the hatred. Chinese nationalism runs deeper than just the party, and a historical top-down approach shows that people have tolerated or even embraced this emperor-esque form of leadership. Despite sweeping reforms that turned China from a cult of personality-led communist dictatorship to an emerging economy chock full of free trade and skyscrapers, the current power is swiftly being put back into the hands of one man. The hope for reform and change has been halted. The slowdown in the economy and its reaction to the slowdown shows China in its true colors. The same trends of its past are repeating, and China is yet again closing itself off. Meanwhile, although Vietnam has a one-party government, with its own host of human rights and freedom of speech issues, it's rising on the Global Freedom Index, while we see China steadily falling. The government actually voted against full consolidation of power and opted to separate the president's duties of commander-in-chief with the duties of the party secretary in order to diversify a range of opinions in the way that Vietnam leads itself. Speaking to young Vietnamese people, they seem very non-aligned and while proud of their nation and its achievements, are very happy that they can use things like Facebook, YouTube, and other social media, while their Chinese peers just north of the border have no such access. This gives the Vietnam populace a little bit bigger of a lens to look at the West and the rest of the world through. As for my general impressions, China goes through the ebb and flow of crackdowns and promotion of blind nationalism, using a victim mentality to keep its people in check. The insane growth in personal wealth certainly helped keep people's mouths shut too. But with the inevitable slowdown looming and the debt and housing crisis on the verge of meltdown, the future is uncertain. But if history tells us anything, the current leadership is a tried and tested playbook of methods to make sure it stays in power. Vietnam feels more hopeful, at least on the surface, as of now. With the current government structured the way it is, there's always danger of Vietnam taking the China approach to things in the future. But if the insane increase in foreign investment, economic boom, and steady improvement in the quality of life says anything, Vietnam is on a healthier trajectory for the time being. The fact that Vietnam, as of now, has not restricted the majority of social media and access to the outside world meant that the people that we talked to had a much broader scope and lens on the outside world and were very aware of what was happening in other countries, and I'm not just talking politics and news, just the things that people were into, whereas the restriction that China brings to its populace by blocking all the social media and access to the outside world limits its educational ability in teaching English to the people of China, as well as kind of limiting their worldview. And it's something, like I said, we really noticed that was very powerful with the youngsters that we met in Vietnam. There was a lot of cultural crossover. There was a lot of people that were into a lot of different things that you wouldn't find in China. And there wasn't really a blind nationalism that you get on the streets of China. Vietnam was nationalist in its signs, in its flags, in its history. But the young people seem really ready to get past all of that and kind of open up to the rest of the world. Speaking of communism, you know what communist governments really hate? VPNs. That's because VPNs are software that unblock and uncensor the internet. These governments like to control and censor the internet so their citizens are not inundated with subversive content. The thing is, NordVPN, the VPN that I actually use, sponsored this video, and I like them for a few reasons. They create a safety net around the internet that you're using, so if you're on a public connection, you can be assured that your data is safe. And number two, it opens up my internet so I can see and post whatever I want. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video, and you can get 75% off if you go to nordvpn.com slash 86 So all in all, you go to these countries and you see all these red banners with the yellow text on them telling them that the party loves them and that Xi Jinping thought is the correct thought to study. There's even apps that people are downloading to kind of get points to trade in for rewards if they look at pro Xi Jinping thought theory. But all in all, this whole communism thing around the world is definitely dying out and the remnants left over are pretty much only on the surface. I want to say thank you so much, Lawmakers. If you want to see more content like this, go to patreon.com slash 86 
And don't forget to leave your comments down below. Give this video a like if you did like it and subscribe if you wanna see more stuff just like this. I wanna say thank you so much, Law Winners. I'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget guys, every single Wednesday, 1 p.m. EST, you can watch Law 86. Actually, just click right here to watch another one. Over here, top here, Monday at 1 p.m. EST, you can watch ADV China, which is my collaboration channel with Winston where we ride motorcycles and talk about topics. Right below that, just in time for a beer, Friday, 1 p.m. EST, you can watch Serpent's Egg.